Hello and welcome. This time we are going to learn about what is known as the task view of CRAN. CRAN stands for Comprehensive R Archive Network. What people have done, as you know, R is a free and open source software uh, where you can write your functions, you can write data, you can package data and functions together. And doing this, you can write packages. You can also upload the packages in an R repository. And that is known as that together with these functions, the data, the instructions, uh, manuals, they're known as uh, comprehensive R archives. And they're in the form of a network so that your users and your students and your fellow um, students and other people can download those packages and then can use them for, for, um, for their own purpose. However, after a while, people realized that it is much better to organize the R packages and you know, R sources and R workarounds based on the tasks that you often have to undertake for your data analytic work. This is where CRAN's task view becomes so important. It is a very, very good learning tool. So in this next few, um, next few um, slide decks and presentations, you will learn how to access the task views, how to download some of them, how to install packages, and how to work with them. You will also learn about what is known as vignette so that you can get a much better demonstrable um, way of working with R. So let's get rolling. Thank you. In this particular edition, we're going to learn how we're going to use what is known as CRAN task view. The word CRAN stands for uh, Comprehensive R Archive Network. This is going to give you a very uh, sense that uh, in R, you can have a number of different packages that people have contributed, and therefore that makes R to be quite comprehensive. So that's, that's comprehensive. And there's an archive in which you can um, put all of the different kinds of packages and that are regularly updated. And in the form of a network, these different uh, packages can be used to learn, quite, uh, learn R um, quite a lot. So we'll cover some of these issues in, in this particular edition. And we'll learn a thing about uh, called task view, which means that you are often faced with specific um, analytical tasks or specific analytical strategies or sometimes even topics that are quite useful. So uh, the CRAN task view gives you a very powerful window into the, into the principles of uh, how to work with R. Now, um, as before, um, we'll be using, we've been using a common motif of these things. So um, at various stages, we're going to talk about, give you um, an introduction to the basic principles, and we'll talk about certain principles. We'll see if we can run some demonstrations for this and then we'll summarize our key learning points. Let's move on. So the objectives of this particular session is this, that we're gonna introduce you to what is known as the Comprehensive R Archive Network um, and the task view of the Comprehensive R Archive Network. Um, we shall uh, give you a hands-on um, idea about um, what is, how you are going to install a CRAN task view. Uh, which is called CTV. There is a whole package for that. And uh, at some point, we'll show you what we can do with the CRAN task view. Basically, what is um, what what how we can use CRAN task view. And one thing that I'd really particularly emphasize in this module is this: that you can use the CRAN task view as a very powerful learning tool for R, because there are many different ways in which you can learn R. One way to learn R is to read the help.start um, command and then you read the entire manual, you know, the RTFM, read the fine manual or read the full manual, RTFM. That is a great way to get acquainted with R. Another way to get acquainted with some of the functionings in R, as we've uh, seen earlier, is that you can um, you know use the help files in R. So you type out help and then you can get some ideas about how you can get some help in R. So that's another one way of working with R. 
A third way in which you can get some help in R is to join the R's beautiful um, and very powerful um, you know, uh, mail mailing list. And um, R maintains a mailing list. And in that mailing list, you can join yourself and ask a few questions. And then you've got Uncle Google, which means that you can always uh, type a particular search term about R and you can find out uh, about that from merely Googling or, you know, searching the internet um, databases and searches, uh, search engines. Now, these are the different ways in which you can learn R. And of course, you can take courses such as this, in which you can get certain, um, in certain ways, you can learn a fair bit of R in, in many different ways. Like, uh, so you, you can do some hands-on exercises, you can take a particular data set, and then you can do this. So I would encourage you to look upon the R or the CRAN task view in that light. In other words, if you learn about the CRAN task view, then you come from the other side of the game. That is, you are learning about R, of course, uh, and you will learn how to write functions. You will learn um, how to um, you know, get some of your own things done, um, bring your own data that you read into R, and then manipulate those data sets in R. But think of approaching a software such as R or a um, statistical programming environment such as R from the reverse direction. So when I say from the reverse direction, I mean that you may be entrusted or you may be interested to perform a certain task and maybe you are familiar with uh, another software, say SPSS or SAS or um, I don't know, um, um, you know, maybe just Python or some other, um, other other things in which you're quite familiar with the old ways of doing this work, say Minitab or maybe even a spreadsheet. What you may want to do then is that transport all of those kind of knowledge and learn about the basic procedures or the method or the field and um, how do you transfer or translate all of these things into an R environment? And this is exactly where CRAN task view becomes very interesting because the task view essentially uh, takes it from your main objective of accomplishing certain specific activities within R and then it'll help you to locate the specific functions that you can use the libraries that you can use and the packages that you can use in order to accomplish those tasks. So this is quite a powerful um, learning tool for R. And uh, in this little uh, presentation, that is going to be my central objective. I am going to introduce you to the concept of learn packages and then we will take a look at how we can use the learn packages, how we can locate them, use them using the task view. Okay. So the first things first, and let's learn a few things about R packages. When you download R from the R's website, which is again the comprehensive R archive network website, basically where people have put up or the R main, our core team have put up the R base package in, and they, they have been distributed all over the world across the servers. Our base package comes with sufficient number of bells and whistles and sufficient number of routines and tools and libraries and functions and data that you can use to accomplish most of your data analytical tasks. However, only relying on R base is not sufficient, nor is it necessary. Therefore, you may either want to extend your own experience of working with R by writing what is known as a package, or you will see that other people have actually written and developed packages that they then distribute free of charge into the R archive network. This is a very powerful feature. So for example, the base R does not include 
um, you know, packages for meta-analysis, but you may be interested in meta-analysis. So what you do is you may develop certain routine because remember that R is not like SPSS or, you know, some other things in which, um, uh, you know, your, 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 the source is closed. I mean, in R, the source is open and you can actually write your own routines. You can write your own functions. So if you can weave your functions and then if you can, you know, put more data and write some more additional codes to glue the function and the data together, and then if you can zip them somehow or put them into a simple um, composite unit, you will be developing what is known as an R package. And it is you because of your own, own specific work that you want to do, but there have been other people who will be doing the same thing. And then you host those packages. So you turn them over into the R, R development core team. They will examine this and they'll say, okay, well, this code works well. And then the code gets accepted and then a package is established. And the package gets then uh, prepared, ready to be served out to the other computers. Obviously, because of so many people working on so many different problems using R, there are hundreds of these packages that are already presented up on the R and particularly in the, in the CRAN service. And people give it away for free. When you, who are the end user of the R packages, what you want to do is you have to install the packages. So uh, for example, let's say you've got a package, uh, you know of a package which is labeled as foo. So I'll say install dot packages and within uh, quote unquote foo within parentheses, and it's going to install all the packages. Each package also comes with what is known as dependencies, which means that, you know, some package may be dependent on another package. So R may ask you that, okay, would you like to um, download the other package as well? And you say, yes, I would like to download the other package and so on. You develop quite a bit of a library of your packages. And then when the time comes for you to actually analyze data, you'll say, okay, I am going to use a library foo. So I'll say, okay, I'm going to use either require and then open a parenthesis and type foo, or you can say library, open a parenthesis, type foo, and then you, um, you, you carry on with this. Well, that package foo has got several data sets. It's got several functions. It's got several ways in which you can interact with this. The function has got their own parameters. They need to be explained. So in order to get, in order to learn a little bit more about foo, but you'll say, okay, okay, I'm going to have, um, I'm going to type help foo, or maybe if we know of functions, let's say help this function, then comma package foo. This is a general motive in which if you are um, interested to work with a particular function, this is what you normally do. So to summarize, what we're going to do is this, that we would like to get some job done or we do not know the particular purpose of a function or a particular package, the contents of package, so we're going to learn something. And typically, when we would like to get our job done or learn something out of this, there are basically three or four ways in which, uh, you know, reasons or ways in which we might be interested. One is that we'd like to do some analysis of certain data. Say, for example, we are interested to conduct a meta-analysis and we find that R does not really have a package for meta-analysis, so I'm going to write one. Or you'd like to really conduct meta-analysis, but you don't know where to start with. Or it can be a field of study in which you think that R may have some contribution. Perhaps, you know, you or your client or your student or your colleague is interest, interested to explore if one can use R for conducting qualitative data analysis. So that's another way in which you can start looking for this. So, well, does R have a qualitative data analysis package in it, like an R QDA or something like that? Or maybe it is a method that you're interested in. And in this particular example, we're going to show that if you are interested in a particular to explore a particular method, then uh, you can certainly use R for learning more about this. And certainly, CRAN task views are a great way to learn these things. Um, for example, uh, in this particular lesson, we are going to explore the method called multivariate data analysis. It's a very, very powerful 
data analytical routine and R is particularly well suited for that kind of work. But it is also important uh, from the perspective of a data analyst to know what packages are present, what kind of data sets are present, what can I do about it? That's where it becomes very, very important. And finally, if we bring them everything to a point, what we are really interested in is we are re interested in the packages and functions that are present in this. So task views, if um, I were to sum up everything, is an excellent way in which you can explore the analysis, the field or a method in order to accomplish certain tasks that is getting the job done and learn something out of it. The first thing that we need to do in order to use the task views is to install the task views. So you have to, you have to download and install the task view. In order to do that, that is in order to download and install task views, you have to do one thing very, very important if you've not done it before. And that is, you have to first install the package CTV. The package is called CTV and it stands for CRAN task view. So CRAN, that's a C bit task, that is D bit P view. So the install dot packages, open and close the parentheses and type within quote marks CTV. You know this. This is a very common routine that we've done before. And then what you want to do, because when you start installing packages CTV, it's going to install quite a few packages, right? So you do it once and then you don't want to do it. You put a hash mark, uh, park it somewhere. And then you call that library, and that library is called library within parentheses CTV. At this stage, once you have done these two things, you are pretty much set. So the first thing that you'd like to do is you are going to get a invoke the function called cran.views, and you want to save the contents of the cran.views into an object. And that object is X, because you obviously understand that as people have expanded their knowledge base and they have contributed their knowledge as to where these functions, where these packages can be applied, their documentation has gone um, deeper. So uh, people have written quite a few things in order to accomplish them with R, and therefore um, these things have, have grown. At the moment, that is at the time of uh, preparing this lesson, say by around the end of 2015, if you ordered all the different CRAN views that are available, you'd be presented with a rough list of around 33 to 34 CRAN views that are already available. And remember that each of these CRAN views themselves are kind of collections of tasks, a kind of collections of packages and functions, etc. etc. So if you print x grand view function, then you're going to get a list of roughly around 36 different um, views. Now, you may need to understand that not all views are, by this process, automatically installed on your system. So views is essentially a document, and this document kind of gives you a sense of the different kinds of packages and functions that are already present here. So um, you will need to separately install a particular view. And it depends on your area of interest. So in this particular case, for example, we are interested to install the view multivariate. So we say print x grand views. We locate that there is a multivariate view present in here. And then we say install.views multivariate. You may be interested in some other things, for example, structure of the question modeling, or maybe interested in meta-analysis. And, uh, you know, you may be interested in some, some other things that we just don't know what it could be. It's up to you. Um, I have given you an example where you can install the view called multivariate. So you install multivariate. And then, uh, as I said, that if you want to find out as to how many uh, CRAN views are available for your machine, or, you know, at, at the time when you're going to read that, you could type print length.x. So the length of x will tell you that x actually is a list and at least lists actually the number of different things that you want to find out. 
So once you have installed a task view into your system, there is a very natural tendency that you would like to read the task view. And ideally, there are a number of different ways in which you can read the task view. You can either use the web interface of a CRAN task view on the website to read them. But hey, you're using our software, particularly say our studio and you know, in, a, in a beautiful R integrated development environment. Therefore, it does not make sense that you will be using um, you know, a web page, for instance, to do that. I mean, you may have to, but it does not, um, you, you may want to read that directly in the in in the console or you know in an associated document reader. So what you do, you uh, you would like to install a package called XML, and XML essentially stands for an X markup language. So if there is that documentation that is written by some people, which using functions such as CTV to HTML, so that that is actually rendered into a into a web page format. Um, you can do this and the file format is um, CTV so which means if you want to read multivariate data analysis then you'll be saying multivariate.ctv and in the package CTV okay that view is presented in the package called CTV and then you read the particular object because um, the, the nature of R is this that R is very reticent uh, in other words R does not uh, R is not very bucolic in other words R does not give you a lot of these packages out all in one go. It kind of um, likes to store packages in specific objects or information in objects, and then you can subset that object in order to extract more information. In this particular case, you store everything in the object called read pack, and then you print out the read pack after having installed the package XML. So this is going to give you a kind of the sense of the contents of the task view so you can see that you can um, you can see all of these things right one of the other things and as you can see the the contents of the task view um, as you can see it, it gives you the name of the task view in which particular case this is multivariate task view and uh, it tells you the topic is a multivariate statistics. It's um, the maintainer of this particular task view is Paul Hewson. It gives you the email address where you can reach Paul Hewson, the date when it was last updated, and then look at the many number of different packages that are present. As I said, that if you want to go back and see, one of the things that you want to do is you have to install a particular view right so for example we had to do install views and then we installed multivariate but we did not specify anything and that was not necessarily a very good thing to do and I'll tell you in a second as to why that's the case because when you install a particular view you say that okay I'm going to install a view so I'll say install view and then give the name of the view and then note here there is something which is known as core only equals false which gives you that the core only argument is a binary argument it's a boolean argument which means that the core only can be either true or core only can be false why is this important because if you put core only equals false then you will be pulling in everything in the task view so the task view not only installs the particular task view or the documentation and everything else but through the task view you're going to pull in all the different dependent packages also into your R installation. If you are working with a machine which has got a limited space for example limited hard disk space then this may not be a very good idea. On the other hand you may not even be interested in um, in many of the other packages that are present in that particular task view. So there are some task views and all task views have specified some very, very core packages. So if the developer is describing a particular task and the different kinds of packages and functions that will enable a user to achieve that particular task, then there are certain core packages that will 
enable a person to do exactly that bit. And that's very, very important. So um, you have to be a little bit uh, careful in what kind of instructions you give the machine um, if you want everything in the task view. So if you're setting out to learn subtopic in depth, then it makes sense if you use core only and set it at false because you really want the full Monty. On the other hand, if your interest is in only learning the basic um, idea about that particular task view, then set core only um, as true. So it will only download a specific set of views. Really depends on what your requirements and what you, how you want to do this, but keep this in mind. So having downloaded some of these things, the obvious question then is how I can use a CRAN task view. What, how do I use this? Once you do this, of course, you will be using the different kinds of packages that are present in it that you have already seen. But the other thing that I wanted to introduce you here is the use of the term vignette. And a vignette basically gives you kind of a scenario in which you can make sense of that particular task view. For example, um, what you may want to do is you kind of print out the entire lists of vignettes and you will see that um, for some packages, in some views, you will get a function which is known, which is labeled or referred to as demo or vignette. And then what you want to do is this, that you would like to print the vignette. So you'll say, in this case, for example, we were interested in um, the package called ICS. And um, so that would be, for example, we would type print vignette ICS and then we'll say the package is also ICS. When you do that, you get a good comprehensive documentation such as ICS, so let's say tools for exploring multivariate data, the package ICS, and it's a long document that you can read, you can make some sense, take notes, and then apply it into your data set that you want to use. So we have, um, we have come nearly to the end of this uh, thing. And let's uh, um, run a quick review or recap some of these things. So how do learning tasks uh, or learning you know, tasks, tasks or task views help us really? The best way to organize this is that you start with a problem. Okay? So rather than giving a sense that I'm just in case learning of R, you say that I got a problem which I want to explore. I want to achieve certain tasks that which I want to explore. And then um, you install a particular task view. And then within that task view, you find out how many packages that are present and search particularly by typing vignettes, whether you can get some demonstrations or vignette or more instructions and examples of those specific packages and functions. And then read them very, very carefully. Thus, by using task views, you can learn R very, very quickly and very efficiently. Okay. So in summary, CRAN task view stands for Comprehensive R Archive Network Task View. You learn that you could install CRAN task views and you can use task views to get a good in-depth understanding of the different packages that are contained and are relevant um, for a particular, for achieving or accomplishing a specific task using R. And uh, very definitely use the vignette function or the demonstration function, which is uh, demo um, within parentheses. Um, and then this way you can get very, very quickly up to speed with R at expert level. So uh, thank you for uh, paying attention to this. Welcome back you had had a test of what CRAN task view can do for you. As we said, to repeat, CRAN start, stands for um, Comprehensive R Archive Network. We have organized the uh, learning and use of our software and packages and functions and use of data based on or oriented around specific tasks that you want to do. For example, in, our, um, in, in this lesson, we covered how you can do multivariate data analysis and what task. So the task for you was uh, conducting a multivariate data. Remember that, that this task can be something else. For example, you may want to work on a meta-analysis. That's a task for you. 
or uh, you may want to work an, on, on an entire field of study, for example, econometrics. So that would be a task for you that you want to explore. So um, at the end of this module, what um, we would expect that you go back and figure out what task you want to accomplish and then come back and read through the R archive networks as to what are the essential packages that you will need to download and work with this and then work with your own data. So I leave you with this uh, message and we move on to the next bits uh, on bivariate analysis. Um, Till next time, thank you.